Finally, I have a Raspberry Pi ARM board, which I purchased from this website after a lot of effort. Hello everyone, welcome back again. In this video, we will be going to take a look at what it is, and also we are going to set up and install an operating system on a headless Raspberry Pi without ever attaching a monitor. The Raspberry Pi Zero W Essentials Bundle contains the most essential things required for plugging it up which otherwise you won't find easily. The Essentials Pack includes Raspberry Pi Zero W, Official Raspberry Pi Zero Case, Mini HDMI to HDMI Female Adapter, Micro USB to USB A Female OTG Adapter, and a 2x20 Dual Row Mail Headers. The Essential Kit does not come with a micro SD card, card reader, and charger. So, you will have to purchase them separately. Once, you have all of these, you are ready to flash an OS onto the SD card. There are several operating systems available for Raspberry Pi Zero W. But, this video was created especially to demonstrate how we can flash Raspberry Pi OS. Let's take a look how we can install Raspberry Pi OS on a Raspberry Pi Zero W without having an HDMI cable. Firstly, download Raspberry Pi OS. Visit the official Raspberry Pi website. Tap on the software. Scroll down and click on See All Download Options. From here, we will have to download a 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS with a desktop. Now, we will have to flash the Raspberry Pi OS image. To flash the image to a micro SD card, we will use the Raspberry Pi Imager application. You can download it from here. Now, we will have to install the Raspberry Pi Imager application. Firstly, we will have to choose operating system which we want to flash onto the micro SD card. There are several varieties of options are available to choose from, including Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu, and others. Since I already have downloaded the image of Raspberry Pi previously. So, I will have to select the Raspberry Pi custom image locally. Now, insert the SD card into your computer. Now, select the SD card as the target. Before flashing the image to the SD card, we will have to configure some basic system changes. Click on Advanced Options. From here, change the host name. Now, enable SSH. Now, set a username and password for Raspberry Pi. Now, we will have to configure a wireless LAN. Now, set the local settings. Now, save it, and click on Write, to flash it onto the SD card. Wait for the flashing process to complete. This can take several minutes, depending on the size of the operating system image and the speed of your computer's SD card reader. Once the flashing process is complete, remove the micro SD card from your computer's SD card reader. Now, we will have to add the WPA supplicant.conf and SSH files to set up a new Raspberry Pi for the first time to connect to the Wi Fi network and enable the SSH server, respectively. The WPA supplicant.conf file is used to store the Wi Fi network credentials for your Raspberry Pi. It contains the network name, SSID, and the Wi Fi password. This file is necessary for your Raspberry Pi to connect to your Wi Fi network. When you boot up your Raspberry Pi for the first time, the WPA supplicant.conf file needs to be present on the boot partition of the micro SD card to connect to the Wi Fi network. Firstly, open Notepad. Add the following lines of code. Now, replace the SSID and password with your Wi Fi network name and password. Save this file as WPA supplicant.conf in the root directory of the SD card. Next, we will have to create an SSH file. The SSH file is used to enable the SSH server on your Raspberry Pi. 
SSH is a secure way to remotely access your Raspberry Pi and execute commands on it. By default, SSH is disabled on Raspberry Pi OS, so, you need to enable it manually. To do so, you need to create an empty file called SSH in the boot partition of the microSD card. When you boot up your Raspberry Pi for the first time with the SSH file in the boot partition, the SSH server will be enabled, and you will be able to access your Raspberry Pi remotely over SSH. Now, we will have to insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi 0W and power it up. Insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi 0W and connect it to a power source, such as a USB port on your computer. Now, we will have to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 0W. Use a tool like Advanced IP Scanner to scan your local network for the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 0W. Look for a device named Raspberry Pi. Now, we will have to connect to the Raspberry Pi 0W using SSH. To connect to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 0W using SSH, we will use a Windows command shell. The run, SSH, followed by the username and IP address. Now, input the password to get connect with Raspberry Pi. Once you are connected to the Raspberry Pi 0W using SSH, you can configure it further and install additional software using the command line. If you want to access Raspberry Pi graphically, we will have to enable the VNC session. Before that, we will have to update the repository using apt-get update. Now, enter the following command to start the Raspi config tool. The Raspi config is a command line tool that is included with Raspberry Pi OS and provides a simple way to configure various system settings on your Raspberry Pi. Now, use the arrow keys to navigate to interfacing options and press enter. Navigate to VNC and press enter. Now, choose yes to enable VNC. Choose OK to confirm the changes. Now, use the arrow keys to navigate to finish and press enter. Use the arrow keys to navigate to yes to reboot your Raspberry Pi for the changes to take effect. Once your Raspberry Pi has rebooted, you can connect to it remotely using a VNC client on another computer on the same network. For this purpose, we will use the VNC Viewer Client tool. You can download it from here. Now, launch VNC Viewer. Now, you will need to enter the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Click on Continue to confirm the identity check and provide VNC server credentials. As you can notice, we have successfully accessed Raspberry Pi graphically. If you want to increase the resolution, we will use the raspy config command. Use the arrow keys to navigate to display options and press enter. Now, navigate to VNC resolution and press enter. Select an appropriate resolution. Choose OK to confirm the changes. Use the arrow keys to navigate to finish and press enter. Use the arrow keys to navigate to yes to reboot your Raspberry Pi for the changes to take effect. Once again connect to Raspberry Pi from the VNC viewer. For a better view, click settings, set the picture quality to high, and scale it to fit the window. If there are any doubts or queries related to this video, then write them below in the comment section.